Now, some of you have sent me some clips of celebs, specifically rappers that have yet to feature on the series. So why not? Today we are reacting to rappers and their fragrances on GQ's hit YouTube series, 10 Things I Can't Live Without. But before we get on with it, here's a quick scent of the day check. Today I am rocking my favorite scent, Byrito Gypsy Water, or as I like to call it for fun, G Water. For all things citrusy, piney, woody, and sweet, definitely give this stuff a test at your local luxury goods department store if you have yet to, and I will leave a link in a card on the screen for more more in-depth coverage. So please be sure to watch that after this video if you want to learn all about the magic that is G Water. But with that aside now, I cannot wait to get into this episode. And let me tell you, this will be one of the most ridiculous episodes featuring some of the most outlandish and absurd takes ever. So buckle up, we got a lot to get through here. Now roll intro, roll video. I don't usually show people that because everybody always asks me what I got on. I can tell you bond number nine and you can never smell like me because it smells different on everyone's body. All right, firstly, we have rapper 2 chains, and oh boy, where do we start? My man is coming right out the gate capping because the differences between people wearing the same scent more often than not shouldn't be that vast. Sure, if one of you smells like cigarettes and then one of you smells like BO and then one of you just showered, of course the same fragrance is gonna smell differently in all three of y'all. That is body chemistry aside, which is kind of overblown anyway because you do hear on Reddit and Instagram all the time now. Yeah, I smelt this fragrance here and or there. Usually it's stuff like Baccarat Rouge 540 or 1 million or Sauvage or Santal 33. So it goes to show that people's honest takes on the most prominent scents out there only exist because these scents are consistent enough to smell similarly enough off of everyone. These scents are, dare I say, notorious for a reason. But what isn't notorious though is this more under the radar 50 ml bond number nine called B9 from 2 Chains here. Also, my man is trying to hide this stuff too by turning the bottle around and GQ is being complicit in saying it's something else like Sutton Place. Like, does that look like Sutton Place to you? That is definitely B9. Without a shadow of a doubt, with that bottle hue and neck, that is good old B9, a modern day gardenia bomb with other pretty notes like a somewhat leathery saffron, as well as a good muskiness to it. I really like this stuff myself and it is definitely leaning on the ostentatious side for a bond, so I can definitely see someone like 2 Chains take it out for a night out. And if you can also tolerate white florals or somewhat feminine leaning scents overall, then I'd urge you to try this yourself. Not only that is, it's the only cologne that you can mix together. I mean, you could take two, three, or four of their fragrances and mix it into one. Wait, what? Can't I just, uh, do this and then this. I don't know why my man is shilling so hard for Bond or if that is an essay that told him that, but of course this isn't true. Because feasibly you can combine any two fragrances you want. The result is not always going to be great, but you can at least physically do it. And to be fair, Bonds are such a finished product type of scent, usually full of an overt synthetic style with performance to boot. And that is something I probably don't want to layer, which makes 2 Chain's statement here even more preposterous. So if I had to layer anything, usually I would go with one that is more minimal, that acts as an enhancer and or a dry down, like Lavabo Another 13 here, for example. And you know what, just to show you, I'm going to spray that a couple of times. Then five to 10 minutes later, I'm going to spray something on top of that, something way more fleeting that will evaporate alongside the Lavabo for a more extended effect that it's not usually used to. So something light like my beloved for Paul Luministe right here. Again, this has meager projection at best, even under the sun, but it's a bit stronger with something underneath it that helps it lift more. So that's my approach to layering. I think I have a game plan, if you will. I personally don't think it's as simple as layering BR540 with Aventus or something like that. Again, for me, I just don't think things always clash together well, which means I'm okay with smelling something on its own for that time being, and then when it's no longer on my skin, I'll spray something else. I don't always feel like I have to have the world on me, but if that's you, then I hope it just smells good off of you. That's all. So I can show you this bottle of Bond number no. nine. So that is my favorite fragrance of all time. I've talked about it. I've rapped about it. I've posted it. Other people have learned from me and done the same thing and plagiarized without giving me proper credit. But I'm not here for that. Not a petty person. Okay, 2 chains might be a little salty if someone gets a nice scent off of him, makes that their signature, and doesn't actually credit him. And hey, I felt that way before as an enthusiast and or content creator. So I hear you fam, I hear you, but it's still a little petty. And because of that, I now feel better about letting that kind of stuff slide if someone adopts something because of me, because I, at least I get the satisfaction of showing them X, Y, or Z. That's what this channel is all about anyway, is promoting the gospel of scent, if you will. I'm just happy I'm not the only one smelling good, and 
I don't necessarily need to have that credit because it's not something that I personally created anyway. I'm just a middleman. And if you really want to give me credit for talking about it, then I guess I would really appreciate that. But that's just it. Even if you don't give me credit for something, but you're still wearing it, I feel a lot better about you than someone who is anti-scent, which believe it or not, psychos like that exist. Okay, so at least my man knows how to spray this stuff onto him. Again, if you can spray on skin primarily to get the most out of your scent, do it. Clothes too, if you don't mind being a little bit more extra with your scent, but only do so if you know it's not going to stain, of course. That and never in the air. That's like the equivalent of making it rain at the rippers because you're wasting money. Yeah, I just wasted a spray. But unlike someone getting something out of it, like the girls with those bills, no one's able to collect anything as far as your scent goes because before you can dance right into it, those molecules are already evaporating. So get the most out of your scent, spray your skin, be a grown up. Is that, is that your applying technique? I don't know, it's just fucking, how do you put cologne on? Some dudes do the, they spray and walk in. Mm -mm, I want I want that shit on me. I don't understand why you would spray something in the fucking air. No, I don't understand why you would do that. Okay, so again, Two Chains was saying some wild stuff earlier, but at least he is saving it here towards the end of it as an ardent skin sprayer. So because of that, I overall have to tip my invisible cap to him, but again, all the other stuff was weird to say the least. But with all that being said, if you still want to smell like Two Chains yourself here, a 50 ml bottle of Bond Number no. 9 B9 currently retails for 330 US dollars, which like most Bond scents, is a little bit much for what they actually are as far as blend and ingredient quality go. Now I can understand if you like Bonds typically from time to time like I do, but again, maybe it's just me, but a lot of people also have this take. I just don't feel like Bonds as far as quality overall are worth what you pay for them at the retail level. I'm sorry. And some of you might want to say that they offset some of that into the presentation, but in my opinion, the presentation also feels a little bit cheaper in hand for real. So I wish there was more redeeming things to say about Bond here, but for me, there just aren't when it comes to MSRP. But thankfully, you can still cop them on the low like this guy on a gray market site like FragranceNet for around $150 for 50 ml. To me, that is quite the discount at over half off and thus now excellent value. So now if you're remotely interested in this fragrance, you know where to get it. But again, this one's still not for everyone. You gotta like white florals or else. But yeah, what else is there to say here now? Thank you to Chains for sharing this one with the class, but let's move on. Wow, what a start. This is a Comme de Garçon perfume. It's old, it's little raggedy. I didn't buy stuff for this, y'all aren't that special. All right, the next wrapper up is Vince Staples and he is coming out firing here today. I didn't buy stuff for this, y'all aren't that special. I mean, I guess we aren't cool, Vince, but at least you brought us something that is cool. As this 100ml Comme de Garçon dot is as whimsical as a scent that you're going to get from CDG themselves. And just like the aforementioned Bond, CDG is also known for their noticeably synthetic style. And while Bond does things to be a little bit more emboldened with a lot of their main notes, CDG instead is it's a little bit more chilled out and a little bit more austere, which I personally really like, a more introspective approach. But if there was ever one that was a little bit more upbeat, whimsical, like I said earlier, it's this one right here in CDG Dot. So yeah, this playful presentation to me kind of smells like a more synthetic Dolce Gabbana light blue if you've ever smelled that scent. So very bright, very citrusy, but this one feels a little bit more greener and there's a little bit more of a synthetic darker bite to it as well. It is a CDG after all, but trust me, this is still the happiest a CDG will typically get. This is the only one I'm willing to give up. I have several. I have one for the car. We have one for if it's a cold day, one if it's a hot day. These fragrances kind of differ based on where you're going, how you're living. Okay, my man is dropping some truth here. And that's the thing, signature scents are cool to scope out on the series and whatnot, but I do appreciate it when people like Vince tell us that they use the scent for this mood and or this weather, etc. because not all scents work for every scenario. Sometimes you might want something like more musky if you might be thinking you're going to jail that day or if you think you might have a court date. Oh man, <laughs> why does musky equate to that kind of riffraff? I don't know, maybe Maybe Vince knows something that we don't. Do they like it musky in jail? Sometimes you need something sweeter if you're going to see your grandma. It all depends on what you're doing. This is kind of the balance. Okay, that's more like it. Yeah, I guess if there was ever a CDG to come see your grandma in, it would be this one. Again, a happier, more citrusy, brighter CDG, right? Very safe stuff. Hmm, kind of robust, floral, I would say. Not too musky, but not too musty. I pair this with like a Dove fresh powder scent, you know what I mean? We don't do Axe, we don't do Old Spice. That's for racist people. Oh man. <laughs> I don't disagree with his analysis necessarily, but Vince's delivery kills me. Or uh, maybe you guys would know, is Axe racist? I don't bring this out for the special occasion, but say I'm going to the car wash. Say I'm going to like a candlelight visual. This is what I'll throw on. 
Comme des garçons d'app, make sure you go get it. Okay, again, this guy is something else. Like, why a car wash or a vigil? But hey, at least my man is more open than the last guy as far as what the scent is and if you should get it. So if you too want to smell like Vince Staples, maybe you should seek out this change of pace from CDG in Dot yourself. It retails for 130 US dollars for a 100 ml with no gray market access currently. And I'd still say that's still a pretty fair price for a uniquely familiar type of scent and that I can't hate on. So thank you to Vince Staples for sharing Dot with us today. This dude is officially crazy. This is uh, my favorite perfume because I think men's cologne smells very strong and doesn't smell that good, so I wear women's perfume. Next up, we have rapper Amine with something fun from Louis Vuitton. It's a 100 ml bottle of Milfa, a very leathery fragrance, which I will get into a bit, but I do want to address Amine's point about men's cologne per se. Sure, to a certain extent, brands can come in with the mentality of targeting women this time or men, but sometimes they do it on a whim because some of these scents don't necessarily fit a gender marketing stereotype. So take Black Orchid, for example, targeted for women, but a lot of women would prefer its darkness on a man. And conversely, take Dior Amantons, for example, with its powdery vibes I detect from it as well as its sweetness, I think it smells more feminine in that regard and a lot of people would agree as well. So what I think Amine is actually trying to get at here is that the most popular types of men's fragrances are ones that he finds too strong. Too strong or harsh rather than men's fragrances altogether because of course there's different kinds of men's fragrances. So yes, sometimes people don't like the ozonic stuff, the oceanic stuff, the fresher stuff, the aquatic stuff. And if they don't want to wear them, sometimes they'll just dismiss it as too strong, although they might not be as strong as something like this or something like this or something like this and stuff like that they might like, but even when that stuff rejects more, they're not going to say it's too strong because again, they like them. Because dudes pass me and they're like, damn bro, what kind of, what kind of cologne? is that I'm like dude it's perfume they feel like insecure and weird about it but then they ask me for the name and they go get it so you know we're changing gender norms out here you feel me okay so here's another thing sure during its initial release Milfa and its collection at the time was targeted towards women but calling women scents perfume and anything for men cologne has just caught on because of convenience if anything because again some feminine stuff is more masculine than masculine stuff is masculine and vice versa and the word perfume for women caught on because because that is the most predominant concentration for women, eau de parfum. So that means conversely for men, eau de cologne, which was way more prominent for men once upon a time, eventually caught on as the predominant term for men's fragrance altogether in just cologne. But of course it goes without saying, a ton of men's fragrances now are now advertised with eau de toilette or eau de parfum concentration. So despite a lot more eau de toilettes coming out nowadays and eau de parfums for males, we are still stuck saying cologne for just about everything. So that is why people in the know kind of want to use a more umbrella term like fragrance fragrance altogether, a more general term that is not going to ever be wrong regardless of which concentration you are talking about. But here's the thing, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that this was the kicker as well, is that perfume is also a general term too. So technically calling all liquid personal scents fragrance or perfume is objectively right, and calling them all cologne is technically wrong even towards just men's stuff, unless it's something as light as an eau de cologne concentration that we are discussing at a given time. Uh, Louis Vuitton. I don't know how to pronounce this. M Mil -f 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 -o. F E U X. I don't know. It's just some cool shit that smells really good. Now, what's unique about all of this is again, Amine finds what is likely to be less concentrated, possibly fresher men's fragrances to be too strong, but a more effeminate Tuscan leather in Milfa, Eau de Parfum, on the other hand, that is either just right for him or, like he just said, smells really good. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't smell good because I think it smells really good as well, but if we were to take performance out of the discussion between something like this and something like maybe Bleu de Chanel Eau de Toilette, for example, I think most people would find Milfa to be the more more exotic smelling of the two and or the stronger of the two because the other one in Bleu de Chanel just feels a little bit more accessible smell. It's simply safer per se. So I guess what I'm trying to get at is if someone doesn't like something, don't be surprised if they call it strong even though it might not be stronger than something they do actually like. They might just not be able to tolerate it more, that's all. But hey, if you want to smell like a Mine yourself and or a Tuscan leather type scent but want less leather and more fruit, I highly recommend you check this stuff out. However, it's not cheap as 100 ml of Louis Vuitton Milfa retails for 280 US dollars for 100 ml at Louis Vuitton stores, desks, or online with no gray market availability currently. So if you can try it before you potentially buy it, definitely do so. It's definitely worth a test in my opinion. Makes me want to revisit it again for now. But yeah, we have Amine to thank for that. So thank you to him for sharing his thoughts with the class today.
we have scent. Scent is very, very important. Next up, we have rapper and chef Action Bronson, and he is not wrong. Scent is definitely very important. And he himself is rocking a 100 ml Bulgari Poram Extreme version, which is a sublime but sadly discontinued citrusy woody tea set. Now this to me has more of a citrus zing. It smells sharper than the OG in Bulgari Poram that is still an active product in Bulgari's roster today. And so I guess it really just depends on what you want. If you want something a little bit more authentic to the Bulgari chillness of their tea scents, something a little bit linear as far as performance, then definitely just check out the OG and it's going to cost you a lot less too. And if you want something that's more akin to men's fragrances as we know them today with a blast of a more citrusy opening and then you're gonna get the rest of that tea vibe definitely just check out this extreme which you can still do so affordably which I will touch on later in this video and if you do your research and discover the Suara version as well this stuff is so long discontinued that I won't even bother discussing it because just look at those resale prices very sad stuff but for now let's let Action Bronson carry on so this is Bulgari extreme it's been discontinued I'm gonna order another one from an off brand website 50% off you know okay okay so my man must know scent or sense in general if he knows that this one is discontinued again you can check if something is discontinued or not by going to the brand's website if it is readily available there and or still listed it's not discontinued unless they are saying that they are phasing it out outright and if it is not there, then yeah, it is unfortunately sadly discontinued. Conversely, if you only see it on other stockists and or the gray market, that doesn't mean it's not readily available either. That just means that they are selling new old stock because once it's gone there, like anything else discontinued, you may be paying secondhand resale prices. That just may be too unreasonable to say the least. But going back to the gray market for a sec, my man Loki hinted at it right here. I'm gonna order another one from an off brand website 50% off you know like that is awesome i don't think i've heard anyone else on this series kind of talk about where else they can get the scent on a lower level per se so yeah if you can like action bronson just save 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 we also had some unbelievable like floral stuff flown in from colombia recently came in this little purple bodice for women but i like it I like it. And hey, I wish my man actually showed us some of that floral stuff because I'm a fan of florals too, so I like seeing it being discussed because sometimes you just generally and genuinely like the smell that for you transcends anything to do with gender. So whatever you do, just wear what you like and that stuff will just remain as marketing or copywriting. I wear secret deodorant. I've tried all these natural things. It doesn't stop my man's smell. My mother described it as uh, like onion soup and it's fucking pungent, it's strong, you know? So I feel like secret is the only thing that actually combats it. Again, my man has done his homework, his field research, and has the battle scars to prove it. Like onion soup. Like damn. I don't know if it's also because my man is a longtime chef as well, spent a lot of time in the kitchen. And because of that, the onion soup smell is kind of embedded into him for years now, but I wouldn't want that. So at least you know my man's secret now, which works for him as well as his scent. And if you too want to smell like Action Bronson here, the discontinued Bulgari Poram Extreme is now fast rising on the gray market because again, Again, there's only so much new old stock remaining. So at just under 95 US dollars for a 100 ml, that's likely the best you will see it at for online currently, unless you have a plug otherwise. And if you do have a cheaper plug, notify me at Cascade Sense on Instagram, pretty please. But yeah, I love the overall knowledge and sentiments shared here by Action Bronson himself. So because of that, he is this video's MVP. Big salute to him for sharing this awesome bulgari and then some with us today. There it is guys, thank you for sticking around this long if you are still here. But it's at that point of the video where I wanna know what you think again. Got a favorite rapper here and or fragrance, perhaps a take of theirs that you really liked, please let me know in the comments below. That being said, please subscribe if you have yet to today. We're on a train riding to 30,000 subscribers, so we'd love to have you. Trust me, it's going to be a lot of fun. And if you also wanna be among the first of my subscribers to watch these type of videos here, please also hit the notification bell as well. Help me help you. But yeah, now I think that officially does it. Thank you for the ongoing support for now. Take care, peace out, bye. My name is Manny, where are your fragrances?